Um, welcome back to the Big R Solution Sports Program. My name is the Sobri Boys, Wale Fatsi from the Big R. Uh, I'm together with uh, Arnold Rankoka. He's popular known as Shubi or Black <laughs> Mamba. He's on Super Sports doing the Sutu commentary. And then, uh, you know, we started on Friday. So we are back again. Now we are looking back. Shubi, welcome to our show. Thank you very much, Nchigu. Thanks once again for the time and opportunity. Yeah. Uh, Shubi, we looked at the games. Friday, we were talking. If I remember quite well, Shubi said, sundowns, they are strong on the paper. Mm. But Kaiser Chiefs, Eganava once I spoke. Uh, <laughs> no, no, you are not saying that. We are saying anything can happen. Mm. All right. Uh, sundowns, they are strong on paper, but uh, they are playing Kaiser Chiefs. Anything can happen. Uh, not to say Chiefs was going to win, but I, I, I think you are absolutely correct. Anything can happen. This is football. Like we normally say, football does not have therefore. All right. Now, should <laughs> I look at the lock today? I see Kaiser Chiefs is right at the bottom. So, what do you want to tell us, Shubi? Well, I guess, uh, um, um what I want to tell you is that Sundowns were a better team on Saturday. Uh, they managed to score three goals. You remember we spoke about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. Now I hear that each and every coach have received a goal each. So whenever a player scored, he says, this is what for my mother. Yeah. This is for my <laughs> so, yeah. yeah it was, but interesting is that uh, Gavin Hunt is giving these youngsters an opportunity to prove themselves. Mm. Now, the previous and people like Bennett Parker, uh, people like uh, Katsande of this world, is knowing that um, their days may be numbered because if you can look the route that Kevin Hunt is trying to take, so mm. it's, uh, it's, it will be a little bit pressure for these guys if ever they're not up in their game. You know, mm. so it was a good game overall, interesting game, and um, we enjoyed it, to be honest with you. So the question is that um, what's going to happen to Kaiser Chiefs beyond to um, uh, beyond uh, today? Because we know now that tomorrow they will be playing against Cheaper United in Port Elizabeth. So Sundowns they've started like a house in fire. They've got uh, they've scored three goals, and uh, two of the players that have scored those goals they are new to the team. So you can see him, Jacob Corre. There is something near the Halang. So. The question is to uh, man manage the momentum. So uh, we are looking forward to the upcoming games of these teams. But overall, it was a good game and it was a, a good start of the league. I can tell you to date, uh, Mr. Cheku, uh, 18 goals have been scored. Out of that 18, we had five penalties, four, four were converted. Then the fifth one was saved, but Majoro uh, made a follow up. Then you can also check. Um, on the there's also one red card that was issued this week to Omis Mabaser. Mm. But um, remember, <clears throat> Rome was never built in a day. Mm. Uh, remember, Mr. Kaiser Mtau is very experienced. He has mm. been around for a very, very long time. Uh, remember, Mr. Mtau has been a coach himself. All right. So mm. You know, it happens in any part of the world. If you go to mm -hmm. England, I know there was Liverpool at some point, the team, the next thing that shifted, came Arsenal, the invincible, and then uh, all of a sudden it moves on, it becomes Man United. At some point it was AC Milan in Italy, and then uh, Juve in Italy, and now, things shift to Spain. So uh, sometimes we, we, we need to give them a chance uh, with the experience that they have at Kaiser Chiefs, especially when you look at the, the leader. The leader knows football. Mm -hmm. He has been there. He has been around for, for quite some time. So I'm sure they'll be able to overcome. 
And then I wanted to say, remember this will be posted on Tuesday. So the game between Chiefs and Chipper is on Tuesday. I want to get it correctly. So, so, so when you say tomorrow, you might think it's on Wednesday. So mm. is it, when is the game? Yeah, the game is tomorrow, go uh, put Elizabeth, and uh, I'll be doing that game between Kaiser Chiefs and Chippa United. Yeah, remember I said tomorrow, which is Tuesday, we are posting on Tuesday. So yes, the, the game will be like today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Remember our program is recorded, uh, it's not live. Uh, mm -hmm. We are still building it, but as time goes on, we'll do live. But now we are comfortable with a recorded program. Uh, it's Monday, then the game is tomorrow. Now, let's say, uh, you know, the other thing that I saw, uh, you know, South African football has improved. I saw beautiful football uh, yeah. over the weekend. And, um, and, and the good thing is the players are new because any, any sport or any organization, it must evolve. You cannot mm -hmm. depend on old players. Remember, we used to celebrate Joe Masono. We used to celebrate mm -hmm. uh, Asin Dr. Kumar. Uh, Dr. Kumar. But we, we can't always be there, you know? There mm -hmm. must be a new people coming in. There was Maradona at some point. Today we are talking mm -hmm. Lionel Messi. So those are, I think, so there is hope. Our football is growing. And then uh, what are they saying? When are we going to see the fans back? I know COVID-19 uh, apparently is taking the upswing um, and, and I don't know. So have you heard anything? Well, um, Jake, we still a long way to go, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I doubt that uh, this year we'll be able to see supporters back at the stadium. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, even now there's still a fear of um, a possible lockdown that maybe also le level three may be coming back. So we'll have to see for what rates are. And we hope that people will behave and make sure that we won't have to go back to those levels that we used to. Because it's got implications on all of us. Because if it's go to level three, we may end up not traveling around. So that's another challenge that we may face with the community. And I must say, ne, um, PSL, they're doing well. Because I could mm. see that uh, they also had the sound effect, like we see mm. in Europe, mm. which is mm. quite good. Because the sound effect is good for the viewers out there. Mm. People like mm. uh, when you are watching, you know, unlike when the stadium <laughs> is empty. But I'm sure mm. the players, they feel that uh, emptiness there. Um, so the sound effect, it's really helpful, really helpful. So I see they're doing well, PSL. We need to say big up to PSL. Let them keep up the good work. But let's look at another game. Know that Pirates played. Uh, give us other games. Yeah, well, uh, maybe, let, me, let me start with the game that also played on Saturday. It was a game between uh, Barroca and, uh, and Marisbeck United. And I don't think many people give uh, Marisbeck uh, Barroca an opportunity to win that game on Saturday. They managed to beat uh, Marisbeck United 2-1. The game was played in uh, Polokwane. Your sound is fluctuating. Your sound is fluctuating. Uh, yeah, no, maybe maybe you need to be position one position. As you move, yeah, okay. your sound is fluctuating. I'm I'm seated. Yeah, the, now now I can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying Richard Mbulu scored the goal for Polokwane City uh, for 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 Barroca, the first goal. That was played in um, in uh, and in Tantram Gaga scored the second one. Then uh, 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 Ali Menza scored for Marisbeck United. That was the game that was played in Polokwane, where we saw that the home team won that game 2-1. Then uh, a second game, it was the Blue Fountain Celtics against um, the Golden Heroes. That game was played in uh, Blue Fountain. So uh, this young man, uh, Letualo, scored the goal for. For um, uh, for Blue for the Celtics, then uh, and Tanzama Kubela scored the goal for Lamontville Golden Orioles. That game was also played on um, on Saturday. So the game that I was doing on Saturday evening it was Cape Town City against the uh, Chippa United. What a game! A beautiful game between these two teams. 
and uh, um, Duduzum Danzani scored the first goal for Cape Town City. Then uh, this young man, um, uh, Augustin Chidi from Nigeria, equalized for Chipa United. So that's another game that was played on um, on Saturday. The same Saturday evening, Orlando Pirates played against uh, Amazulu. That game ended up being 1-1. Uh, Amazulu, uh, they are the one that um, have uh, considered the penalty. Then Gaba Dino Mohango scored that penalty for Orlando Pirates. Then uh, it came back again that Mohamed Maduro also received the penalty, he converted that penalty against Orlando Pirates. That game ended up being 1-1 for these two teams. Then uh, on, uh, on set, uh, same uh, Saturday evening, we saw Supersport United. They played against Black Leopard. Supersport won that game 2-0. Bradley Robla scored both goals for Supersport United. And Omisma Basera is the first player this season to receive a red card. And he received the red card on their game against the um, uh, Black Leopard. So it was one of those interesting games that took place on Saturday. Yesterday, Mcheku, we saw another game. Uh, it was a Stellenbosch against Moraga Swilos, or Swilos FC. Swilos and uh, Stellenbosch, they played to 1-1. Then uh, Ruzen Hamaldin scored the goal for Swellos FC. And it was a beautiful goal that he scored. And you ask yourself, Mshiguru, the beautiful big supporters, how did they feel? I mean, I spoke to the, uh, to the president of the team after the game. He says that he was emotional about the game because he didn't know what to expect when that game took place. But it was a, it was a nice game. It was a beautiful game. Then uh, we're hoping that these teams will keep on competing and scoring goals against each other. But overall, it was a good game. Then the game, that was interesting. It is two teams that bought status in Cheku. You remember uh, TS Galaxy mm -hmm. and uh, Chakuma. Both yes. of these teams bought status of Highlands Park and Bitvest Vets, respectively. So those, um, they played to 1-1 one, one draw. Uh, Bevan Fransman scored for TS Galaxy. Then Mohakuru Lingene scored the goal for uh, for uh, uh, TTM. So those are the games that took place in the local football this weekend. And then since uh, Bahaka, they've suspended their coach, any signs that uh, they're having problems in the field of... No, well, I mean, they, they, they managed to get three points on their game. So you can see, Jorge, um, I don't think they feel that uh, void, that the coach is not there. So the, whoever that took place, uh, who was sitting on the bench, he's raising his hand and saying, guys, I'm here, don't look any further. Uh, consider me, give me an opportunity to prove myself and I can be able to do the job and make sure that I take this team to the next level. And then uh, while they are still there, um, I saw the, the jersey of Morocco Silos. What a beautiful jersey. A brilliant, mm. brilliant, brilliant jersey. And then uh, I thought they would be wearing that jersey, but unfortunately they were wearing another jersey, um, so which is quite good. And then um, uh, let's get uh, the homeboy, Mr. Lusufi, uh, on our program at some point. Let's hear what plans do they have for the team. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, and then in the meantime, during the absence of a play, I mean, uh, supporters attending, are they recruiting or what? So those kind of things. Now, mm -hmm. any other interesting thing around the issue of teams like Orlando Pirates, anything that you saw interesting that tells you that you know, the team is gearing for something else this year? Well, uh, let's look at Amazulu. I mean, Amazulu, they've assembled a strong team. And they've signed a lot of players. I can tell you today, they've unveiled the Tolam Lambo, former Orlando Pirates um, um, uh, middle field. They've joined Amazulu as uh, one of their new signings. So you can see, Hore, Amazulu are there to compete. As I've said last time that uh, their president want them to be finished within the top four. And you can see the way it goes on and signing players, signing good quality of players. So you can see, Hore, it will be very much interesting to see next season. For what's going to happen about the rest of these other teams? What happened? Why Mr. Sokela sold the team? Do you have any information there? Well, I think uh, he, he received an offer, and he, the people that came in, 
they want to take this team to the next level. They said it's a big brand. It cannot remain where it is. I think uh, Mr. Sokela, where he was, he couldn't take it, this team to the next level. Hence, he passed on the baiting to the guys that thinks that they can take this team to the next level. And that's what we need to uh, wait and see. The performance that they gave against Orlando Pirates, you can see for these guys are prepared and they're looking forward to, 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 to compete and make sure that it's one of those teams that will add value to our league. So oh, I think it's, it's a good start for them as a team. What happened to Simpua Chabalala? Is he, was he not match fit or what? Or it was well, a critical uh, decision? No, I'm telling you, the guy has been down, out for almost two years. There's no way that he can come back so quick. So they're still giving him the chance. And you look at him, look at his age. It's not going to be easy for him, but we hope that he will come. But I still think that they bought him. Uh, I don't think they are going to utilize him for the whole season. As that. Now, mm -hmm. uh, let me go back to Kaiser Chiefs. What's happening with their case with uh, Kev? Is it Kev or FIFA? In this case, it is with cast. Uh, it is cast. Okay. It is cast. Yeah. Cast. Okay. And yeah. Then, uh, what's happening uh, with that case? Are they? Well, they're still waiting for the verdict to see if ever can they sign the new players. As it is, they are not allowed to sign any new players to come and join the team for the next coming two seasons. So they are still hoping that that uh, that decision can be reversed so that this team can be able to start uh, signing new players and compete with the rest of other teams. So when are we hoping to hear the outcome? Hey, we're praying and hoping, uh, the whole country is hoping and praying because the thing is that nobody knows when this guy's going to come back. But we, we're still uh, hopeful that it will happen very soon. How's that? Mm -hmm. Okay, no. Um, now, uh, Mamelodi Sundowns. Uh, as you said, the three musketeers. What's 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 your opinion? You have seen them, and then um, I see Tembazwane. Uh, it shows that he, fresh from the the awards, he's still uh, motivated. Uh, he still wants to go forward. What do you want to tell us a little bit about Mamelodi Sundowns? Well, it was a great start for Kombela, Niti, and Mokwena after they lost their first game in a cup game against Fulvonten Celtics. They have made sure that they rectify their mistake. They've given some of the new players an opportunity. Somebody like Kemet Rasmus was given a first start, he scored a goal. Peter Shadwili was given a first start also, he scored a goal. I mean, uh, Tembazwani, you are seeing that it is the third consecutive season that Tembazwani scored a goal in an open game for Mamelodi Sundowns. Is it? Now, yes. did you get any news uh, about Al Alhi? Because we have uh, our son there in Pito Musimane. How are they doing? Well, uh, they've qualified for the CAF Champions League after they beat Wadat 5-1 uh, aggregate and uh, they won that game 3-1. So you can see that these guys are working so hard. They are preparing themselves. They are giving it all to make sure that um, they are going all out to compete with this, the rest of this team. Pizzo is on the verge of making a history as a coach to win a second star as the Kev Champions League. So they are waiting for the, for the winner between Zamalek and Raja. So all of us, we are waiting to see when, when that game will be resumed. Then we can be able to know who will be joining Allah. In the final. We must root for him. Uh, we must support him. Let's hope that he's going to win that title because he's going to make us proud as a country. Um, and we, we want to see. Now, apart from Pito, I know that Benny McCarthy is somewhere in Europe uh, coaching. Do you have any news around that? Well, uh, I, I, he's not yet uh, coaching Shegu. He's still part and parcel. Uh, we see he's still with his family in Scotland. He's still waiting for an opportunity. We were hoping to see him back in South Africa, but unfortunately, it looks like uh, none of the team were interested or they didn't sign him. So we're still hoping that one day we'll come back in our country to coach. But as it is now, he's not coaching any team. He's not coaching any team. Now, not at all. Um, any news? Do you know anything about Lucas Hadebe? What is his whereabouts? What's happening? 
Stephen Pinar, um, Quentin Fortune. I don't know whether you want to touch on those. All our players who were overseas doing well. Do you have any news that you can tell us? And well, uh, Quentin, Quentin Fortune is coaching a reading in the Champions League, a Championship League as the head coach. You remember he was part of the Manchester United. So he has given an opportunity to coach. Now he's a senior coach for reading. Lucas Hadev is still involved. He's still hoping to be part and parcel of the SAFA leadership. And we're hoping that he can be able to work hard. And because he says it's his dream is to become the president of South African Football Association. So we'll have to wait and see if that dream will eventually come to pass. Uh, Steve, uh, Steven Pinar. He's still in and out of South Africa. I mean, he's, he was working as an analyst for Supersport and SABC. So he's still trying to see. He's saying that he may consider going taking a coaching, even though he has never thought of becoming a coach, but it looks like it's something that he can consider. Now. And Steve is doing well because he has mm -hmm. a, a program in, uh, in, in, in uh, Westbury, which is quite good. Yeah because mm -hmm. we want to see people going back and plowing back to the communities where they come from. Um, and I think, uh, according to Grapevine financially, he's doing well, he's doing well. Remember the big R, we talk about financials, and then uh, we want to link the two financials and sport. And then I'm told that Steven Pinard is doing very well financially. And then uh, while we are still there, and then remember we're talking about the players who were there, down and out now. Uh, but I must say, I'm very impressed, but you can tell me better because you work with him, uh, that uh, Jabu Pule has turned his life around uh, from probably no one wanting to work with him uh, to a point now he's back now, he's with Supersport as an analyst, and then uh, probably you need to get him and then find out from him what were the wrong things that were happening. What did he do that made him to turn his life around? Not only him. I see this young man uh, who used to be his partner. Uh, Junior Kanye is doing well. He's an analyst, uh, doing a very good analysis, sharp to the point and not buying anybody's favor, but saying whatever that he feels or what he sees. Remember that is his opinion, but I've picked up normally whatever that he predicts, it comes to fruition. So we'll watch and see, but those are some of the players who turn their life around and, 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 and doing well. And this is what we want, because it's not only about football, it's also about football, and you are a husband, you are a father, you are a brother, you are a grandfather, so you are a, a family person. So it would be nice to see you doing well, even life-wise, okay? So those are some of the things that I want to touch on. I don't know whether you want to touch on something. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, we can look at Jabu Mashamu. He has done work for himself. He's also yeah, involved in the construction business. So it's also uh, giving motivations to uh, people that have been dealing with the substance abuse. And you can see that the guy has transformed his life. Hence, things are going well for him and we are happy for him. He chose that giving a support, giving um, a encouragement and uh, can turn him around. And that's what we want. And responsibility is one of those other things that he has shown. And to say, you know what? Yeah, you can transform your life and go back to where you were supposed to be. And it's one example that we can look back and reflect and say, we are here with the progress that is. You, you mentioned one of the positive R ways, which is responsibility. You have to take responsibility. If things goes bad, it's your responsibility to turn them around. No one else. So we are very proud. Let's move now to Europe, unless you want to say something. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm done with, uh, with local football. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm done, I'm done yeah. and that's the thing. Yeah. Our sound was not very well, especially on your side there. So probably we need to check what could be the problem and sort it out. Um, Europe, we know the biggest game in the world, El Clasico. 
and then everybody was watching that. Everybody wanted to see what's going to happen. Remember when El Clasico play, even all other players who are playing, they stop and watch because that's the biggest, <laughs> biggest game. Although I think it has lost its mojo since Ronaldo uh, left. And I don't know if Messi leaves. Is it's gonna be it's still gonna be very attractive? It's gonna be very, very difficult. I see that the president of uh, La Liga is trying to plead that Messi should not leave uh, the La Liga league because they value him very much. Now, the El Clasico, you know. Uh, Shubi, you can ask me, I saw it coming. You know, I saw it coming that Barcelona, they'll never make it. Now I'll tell you why. Most coaches and most teams, they don't have a solution how to deal with Messi. But let me tell you, that solution has been, has been found. And you know who found that solution? Barcelona itself. They are the ones who are giving people solution. You know, Pep, Pep once said, Messi loves me. Messi wants to play. If you want Messi to do well, just give him the ball. But now this new team, and you could see when you were watching game, you know, that Messi, you know, he was even angry. You know, Messi likes one, two. I give it about, bring it back to me. I'll give it about, give it back to me. And once they were not doing that, you could see that Messi was irritated. And I don't know why Barcelona wants a solution outside Messi, because their solution has always been Messi. Now, they are the people who are now creating problems for themselves. And I can tell you, I'm not even optimistic that on Wednesday, they are going to do well. Moreover, they are the people who are really making it difficult for Messi to play. And in that game, I was watching and say, I don't understand how Kumen think. Quin, uh, uh, Quintino was off form and very tired. A Pedri was not effective. A Busquet, Busquet has been ineffective for quite some time. I know in Spain, they love him. But one thing for sure about Busquets, Busquets lose too many balls. And in most cases, the balls that Busquets loses, they create problems, all right? Mm -hmm. So now the coach waited until 80 minutes to change. If you change in 80 minutes, how do you expect to change the course of the game? You can't, you can't. And moreover, they are saying now, they are allowed to introduce up to five players. Now, Kumen, the first player that he introduced was at the 80th minutes. You can't change any game. And, and who does he bring? He bring Griezmann, you know what? I said, no, you know what, this guy, I don't think he's gonna solve. Apparently, Griezmann was final, did not play, but all the people that he brought in, you know, they didn't have any effect to the game. All right. And I'm still saying if they want to resolve their problem, the solution that they want by saying we don't want to be a team that to be seen to be messy dependent, they don't have a choice. They are messy dependent. They must go back to the basics and say, give Messi the ball. They'll see what's going to happen. Ansu Fati is a shining star. And guess what? Before the age of 18, Ansu Fati has scored um, about 12, game, 12 goals before the uh, age 18. Ronaldo before age 18 scored five. Messi before 18 scored one. So that is an indication that we are having a star in the main. All right. So now instead of, uh, you know, allowing this young man to be supported by people like Messi, as much as Messi was supported by Ronaldinho, now they are really creating pro. That is why Bush, uh, PK came out against the, 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 the board. 
that uh, what they are doing is a problem. You see, and then uh, why were they treating Suarez like they did? Why are they treating Messi like they are doing? So they need to see how to sort out things. Today they had a meeting the board. People thought that the president was going to resign. Guess what? He refused. He said, I want to go to the finishing line. So I want that vote, vote of no confidence to be uh, to, 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 to proceed so that I test whether can I survive. Uh, I think Barcelona's problems are centered around this board and the players are not gelling well with, with the board and, and there's a problem. There is a huge problem. Uh, but I may can say whatever that you want to say, but I don't think he's a positive uh, person. As much as he wants to annoy somebody, but I think that person might not win the election because on the basis that people hate Batame. So whoever that has been anointed by, by Batame, I don't think it will work out. So that's the problem. And the other news that came out from Spain, uh, remember Barcelona has lodged a complaint in relation to the penalty. And then they are saying it is uh, suspected that the referee has ties with Real Madrid. So we'll see how it's gonna outcome, how it's gonna unfold. But those are some of the things that are happening, you know? And, 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 and the way I see things, if you may ask me, who will be the strongest team in the Champions League? According to me, Juventus is gonna be the strongest team in the Champions League. I don't see Liverpool doing it again. I see they are struggling this year. Um, Man City, they are also struggling, and then uh, Man United, they still a long way to go. Um, for me, I still Juve I see Juventus as the team that is strong, and again Bayern Munich. Those are the team that I think they'll do well. The other team that I can tip to be doing well. Although they have their own problems, it's PSG. Why I'm saying their own problems? Because already Mbappe is not settled. Because Real Madrid wants him. <coughs> Sorry, he also wants to go to Real Madrid. Um, and that will destabilize the team. And I fail to understand the current candidate contesting uh, uh, who wants to consider to be a president at Barcelona, Font, when he says he wants Mbappe. I fail to understand, how do you want the player when the player says, I want to go to that team? For me, it's mm -hmm. a winning formula. And then Messi has always been saying, you know, if you want to solve our problem, get Neymar back. And Neymar this time has realized that he needs Messi. Now, why don't you do that? Take Neymar, and Neymar's 28 years old. He can still run for another eight years. And in that eight years, he'll bring quick trophies to the team, all right? Neymar will bring quick glories to the team. And then, uh, so that's what uh, we saw over the weekend. And let's hope <laughs> that uh, things will get better. Uh, but it's really bad around the issue of um, uh, Barcelona. We wish them luck. And then um, till we meet again on Friday, and then we'll be looking at the games on Friday. And also, we'll also be looking at the games that play during the week, the results. So yeah. let me hear your, your final words. And then uh, no. from there. Yeah, we will meet on uh, on Friday when we look at the results for today in the week games, and we will be looking at the semifinals for MTN Power. Okay. Now, before we go any further, do you know? Uh, before we we leave, do you know what is the price for the winning team for PSL? First price. It's ten million. <laughs> Still ten it's, million. Uh, ten million. Yes. Still ten million. Okay. Yes. Sir. Now I I thought we have DSTV now. It will go up. Okay. No, still ten million. Still ten million. No, that's fine. It was only reviewed last year. 
Yeah. It was only reviewed last year. Yeah, but I thought because there is a new sponsor, then we'll get something else. No, they just carry it on. All right. Thank no, you, uh, thank you. We'll talk again on Friday. Thank you, Mr.